Hello and welcome to Matador News. I'm Ruben Arias. And I'm Amy Martinez. A second nurse has tested positive for Ebola after contracting it while treating Thomas Eric Duncan. Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings advises people to remain calm as details of the new case emerge. We want to minimize rumors and maximize facts. We want to deal with facts, not fear. And I continue to believe that while Dallas is anxious about this, and with this news this morning, the anxiety level goes up a level, we are not fearful. The apartment complex of 26-year-old Amber Vinson is being quarantined while she is in isolation at her workplace, Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital. Officials are contacting more than 100 people she was in contact with, including passengers of Monday's Frontier Airlines Flight 1143 from Cleveland to Dallas, Fort Worth. Vincent reported symptoms the day after flying. Now with more on Ebola, let's go to Matador News reporter A.J. Romero in the newsroom. CSUN Public Health Education Department Professor Lauren Chu says the world will survive this. In our history, we have survived many pandemics. We have survived uh, cholera pandemics. We survived the uh, influenza pandemic in 1918, 1919, the Spanish flu. Uh, so yes, we have survived many a pandemic and we'll survive this Ebola pandemic as well. Dr. Chu says he thinks the U.S. has a better health infrastructure than hard hit countries in West Africa. Um, any country is vulnerable to Ebola, but I think because of the public health infrastructure that we have, the resources that we have, um, that uh, it is, we are not going to see a similar outbreak that we're seeing at, in West Africa at the time. Um, so we have the resources to treat patients with the disease. We have the knowledge of, how, of knowing how the disease is transmitted. Um, so, and we have the facilities available. More than 80% of nurses in the union surveyed report that they have not been given adequate training on Ebola. Now back to you in the newsroom with more on Ebola. Criticism is growing over the procedures used by Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital as new cases of Ebola emerge from there. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the National Institutes of Health says he was not surprised by the new Dallas case. It's extremely disappointing and sad that this individual got infected. It didn't surprise me because it was very clear that the conditions that led to the infection of Nina Pham clearly were the conditions in which this person was exposed. National Nurses United co-president Deborah Berger says the hospital violated protocol. They did not have access to proper supplies and observe the observed the infection control department and the CDC themselves violate basic principles of infection control including cross-contaminating between patients. Meanwhile, President Obama canceled a planned campaign trip to address Ebola concerns. The U.S. Central Command says its military forces have conducted more than a dozen airstrikes against ISIS near Kobani, a town on the Syrian-Turkey border. The fighting in and around Kobani has killed more than 500 people and has forced more than 200,000 people to flee across the border into Turkey. Still, ISIS continues to conquer more ground in Iraq. Islamic State fighters have surrounded one of Iraq's largest air bases and are planning an attack. Nearly 60 countries are now part of the effort to stop ISIS. Video of Hong Kong police officers apparently beating a protester have the potential to encourage more demonstrations. The video shows several officers carrying Ken Sang to a dark corner and repeatedly kicking him and beating him. Other officers were apparently keeping watch. Protest groups circulated photos of his injuries, which included bruises to his face and welts on his neck, back, and stomach. Hong Kong officials have pledged to look into the beatings, and six officers have been temporarily removed from their current duties. Democracy protests in Hong Kong have been going on for several weeks. Students from three Huntington Beach schools have been indefinitely transferred to neighboring schools due to an asbestos scare. The schools will remain closed for five to ten weeks. 
renovation projects that were supposed to have been completed by the beginning of the school year continue during the semester. Parents are concerned that their children may have been exposed to asbestos. School officials say the traces of asbestos found are minimal. Hurricane Gonzalo is moving through the Caribbean causing significant damage. An elderly man was killed in St. Martin and 12 people were hurt. The hurricane has damaged public and private properties. The storm is expected to arrive in Bermuda on Saturday. The National Hurricane Center in Miami says the storm is not a threat to the United States. A U.S. Air Force space plane is expected to land in Southern California today. Vandenberg Air Force Base said it is unsure of the exact landing time, but the plane is expected to land during daylight hours. The plane lifted off from Cape Canaveral in Florida in December 2012. The official purpose of its mission is to test technologies including advanced guidance, navigation and control, and thermal protection systems. But because the spacecraft has been in orbit for more than 22 months, there has been speculation that its mission also included some spying. Toyota is recalling almost 2 million more vehicles and another setback for the automaker. One of the three recalls is needed to fix a brake system problem and covers vehicles sold in Japan. The company says the models that have the issue are the Crown Majesta, Noa, and Voxy. A second recall for nearly 1 million Lexus vehicles include about a half a million models in the United States. The automaker is looking to fix a fuel delivery problem which could lead to a vehicle fire. The third is for some 200,000 vehicles in Japan to address a fuel leak problem. The automaker says it is unaware of any crashes, injuries, or fatalities from the recalls. Let's go to Kelsey Cole with the latest on business. Thank you. Trends in the stock market, stock market show investors running from stocks and moving to bonds for safety. Dow Jones Industrial dropped more than 350 points just after the opening bell and has struggled all day to recover. At last check, the Dow is at 16,034 points. That's down 880 points down. NASDAQ is at 4,177 points, down to 50 points. In Europe today, Greece's stocks took a major dive. The benchmark fell down 10% before rebounding slightly. Greek banks were hit the hardest, with the National Bank of Greece falling 13%. Gas prices have reached a new low this year. AAA says the average retail price for gas has dropped 20 cents a gallon in the last month. Ten states already have average gas prices below $3. The steady drop in crude oil prices is the reason for the downfall in gas prices. Crude oil prices are decreasing due to increased oil production in the United States and Saudi Arabia. Samsung's Galaxy Note is giving iPhone 6 Plus new competition. The new Galaxy Note 4 is similar to the iPhone 6 Plus, but it has a bigger screen, a bigger battery, and image stabilization built into the camera. The Note 4 also allows users to run multiple apps at the same time, and it comes with a pen. The pen can be used to take notes, and the Note 4 will convert users' handwriting into text. The Galaxy Note 4 will be available for $299, with a two-year contract on October 24th. Now let's go to Evan Medeiros for health. Thanks, Kelsey. Researchers have made a breakthrough on the road to a cure for vision loss. The researchers from many hospitals across the United States, including two from UCLA, published this study in this month's issue of The Lancet. Through injecting stem cells into 18 patients, the researchers found all 18 showed improvement of an average of three lines on the vision chart. The controversial use of stem cells has been a hot topic for many years and study co-author St Dr. Steven Schwartz says this study is a significant first step but is by no means a cure for macular degeneration as of this moment. The Supreme Court has ordered Texas not to enforce a law that required all abortion clinics to be shut down. The law allowed for Texas to consider abortion clinics under the same regulations as hospitals. The original backers, Republican lawmakers, say that it would improve patient care and safety. Abortion rights groups say that, it mo that the law makes it almost impossible to operate the clinics properly. The court's decision is only temporary while the state appeals the constitutionality of the law. Santa Monica is the latest Southern California city to ban the public use of electronic cigarettes. Starting November 13th, e-cigs will have the same restrictions as tobacco. Vaping will be prohibited in public areas and retailers will need a tobacco license to sell e-cigarette products. 
in-store smoking at vapor bars will also be banned under the ordinance. Now let's go back to Kelsey Cole for technology. Thank you. The U.S. Navy has teamed up with engineers and designers to create one of the first industrial use exoskeletons. The exoskeletons will support tools of up to 36 pounds and transfer that load from a worker's hands to the ground. The Navy has bought two and plans to test them over the next six months. The exoskeleton is made out of anodized aluminum and carbon fiber and weighs 30 pounds. It has joints, flexes from side to side, and will follow along the outside of a human body. Those wearing the exoskeleton will climb, will still be able to climb ladders and stairs, squat, and move as they normally would. Bono has apologized for gifting iTunes customers with a free digital copy of U2's new album. Apple automatically sent the Songs of Innocence album to active iTunes accounts. Customers complained and said the way the album was distributed was invasive. This comes after iCloud security was accused for its part in high-profile celebrity photo hacks. Bono said the group was just trying to be generous to their fans and self-promote their songs they spent years creating. The first case of internet addiction disorder involving Google Glass has been identified. The man diagnosed was originally checked into the Navy Substance Abuse and Recover Program for alcoholism treatment. The man had been using his Google Glass for up to 18 hours a day, leading to his admission. Doctors say he experienced withdrawal symptoms that were much worse than the withdrawals he went through from alcohol. Now back to Evan Medeiros for sports. The LA Dodgers have a new general manager as of this morning. Andrew Friedman was the general manager for the Tampa Bay Rays from 2005 to 2014 and has now been brought in to lead the boys in blue. Friedman resigned from his position with Tampa Bay yesterday and was officially hired by Los Angeles today. The Dodgers' early exit from the playoffs prompted many to feel that major changes were needed from the top of the organization all the way down. Former GM Ned Colletti will remain with the organization as a special advisor to Dodgers CEO Stan Kasten. The ALCS continues between the Kansas City Royals and the Baltimore Orioles after Game 3 was delayed due to a torrential rain. We go to the top of the sixth inning where, Adam, where Orioles star Adam Jones hits a pot fly foul and Royals third baseman Mike Moustakis makes an amazing catch in his own dugout falling over the rail. Later in the bottom of the seventh, Billy Butler hits a sacrifice fly allowing Gerard Dyson to score from third, giving the Royals a 2-1 lead that the Royals would hold on to till the end of the game. The Royals now lead the series three games to none. The Royals can complete the sweep of the Orioles tonight at Game 4 at home in Kansas City. Now to the NLCS between San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. Game 3 was in San Francisco with the series tied at one apiece. We'll pick it up in the top of the 10th with Randy Choate on the mound and runners on 2nd and 3rd. Giants outfielder Gregor Blanto lays down a bunt and Randy Choate overthrows first base allowing the Giants Brandon Crawford to score from, set, from third on the walk-off air, giving the Giants the overtime victory. The Giants now lead the series two games to one, going into game four tonight in San Francisco. Now back to the news team. I'm Amy Martinez. And I'm Ruben Arias. Thank you for watching Matador News.